All right, let's get to it. Starry freaking night. Starry night was a dueling stack. It still is a dueling stack. I don't think it's ever been top tier though. And we're playing against what is currently the best deck now better than Snake Eye Fire King on the tier list. And you all have to agree that Ubel is freaking everywhere. Begin. There can only be one winner. And you're looking at it. Let's go. All right, Yusuf, show me the way. Starry Knight, I think, is about destroying cards on the field by uh, summoning from the hand, something like that. Ravel is attempting to add a Starry Knight spell trap from the deck to the hand, and it's getting negated. No search. Damn. We're going to follow up with the Balefire to add a Starry Knight monster, and then we're going to get that Starry Knight monster out to then get negated by Gamma. What were we even activating? You can target one light monster control, tribute it, and if you do, set one Starry Knight spell trap directly from your deck, which is now attempting to get negated. As the Ash then negates the negate, and as the Gamma is being negated, the Gamma can activate again, but not within the same chain. Within the same chain, you cannot be special summoning the same monster twice from the hand. It's also already revealed right now. So we're going to, if you had a second Gamma, you would have been able to activate it. Negate. So what are we going to do that's going to play around the second use of the Gamma? We now have a Starry Knight Ceremony in our back row activating. We're activating the effect to reveal a Starry Knight card to then search our deck for one, then return a card back. Sure. Okay. So we replaced it with our new boss monster, our main boss monster. If this card is summoned from the hand, you can target one card in the field and destroy it. At the start of the damage step, if this card attacks an opponent's monster, you can banish that opponent's monster until the end phase, so non-target banish. How do we get it out, though? Let's see. We're gonna start this off with the Spirit Gates, adding from our deck to our hand, Dark Beckoning Beast, come to us, Chaos Summoning Beast. Now, many people are asking, why do you play Chaos Summoning Beast? It's if you open up just the Spirit Gates to search for Dark Beckoning, then Dark Beckoning can only search another Spirit Gates, right? So that's not good. Instead, you could search for a Chaos Summoning Beast so you can get the two fiends in the field. Additionally, summoning our D Lotus to then tribute itself to someone from the deck, our Spirit of Ubel, searching and setting up our Nightmare Pain. We're activating the ceremony right now. If your opponent activates a card or effect, you could special summon a dragon from your hand and this on summon will get popping this is it on summon wiping out that nightmare pain <laughs> oh geez yeah the opening of the spirit gates if you have a level 10 on the field simply add a continuous spell in the graveyard right back to your hand as if that never even happened that is unfortunate and is that the end of starry night i don't think that there is any more disruption i think starry night is pretty much just pop one on your opponent's turn and then scoop damn well at least you tried. There's a game too. Let's find out what happens. All right, what is good here? We're, oh my gosh, we're gonna set three pass. Is this gonna turn into any form of disruption? Possibly not. We're gonna be opening up again with our opening of the spirit gate mate, summoning our dark beckoning beast, searching another spirit gates. Additionally, summon our D Lotus. I mean, should I even read these traps for not activating them? Club of the Grave fingering that D Lotus, a great finger. Ash or finger that D Lotus, perfect. Imperm or Veiler onto the D Lotus is quite sus. It's a bad idea generally because they could reborn it with the Spirit Gates, they could reborn it with Muckraker. We're gonna special summon our Grave Squirmer, now making our Lord of Yama. Come to us, Shavara, discard to reborn from the Grave, our Spirit of Ubel, searching and setting up our Nightmare Pain. Nightmare Pain, pop the Spirit of Ubel, add a Spirit of Ubel, summon a Ubel, pop Ubel, Chavara, Ubel, summon a Terra Incarnate. Oh my gosh, uh, Starry Knight didn't really do much, but you know, that's how it happens in a tournament. Pot of P, let's dig deep into our deck. Come to me off the top of our deck. The area setting, something would not be so good here. The Ariane summoning an Ariana from the deck will be pretty good but Imperm will negate. That is unfortunate. And a cool combo here would be is in response to the opponent's impermanence, you chain Torby, discard a big welcome, then big welcome will change the Torby effect, returning the Ariane back to the hand to dodge the impermanence. But uh, we don't have that. So we're gonna set up a big welcome to be used during the opponent's turn here. And after a monster leaves the field through its summoning from the deck, maybe a lovely, we could pop a card from the hand or the field right here, right now. It could take out that D Lotus with our lovely. The Stovey will also resummon itself back onto the field. 
And with the Samsar D Lotus being destroyed, we're very simply going to just not be able to use one for one, actually. We have to have a monster in the hand to even activate this card, but we could use the triple tactics how to draw into two cards, which will likely one of them be a monster. Come forth, Torby, wipe out that D Lotus. We're going for that draw too. Yup, yup, yup. Come to me. Any monster card. We got that Ash Blossom. Imperm onto Lovely. Why would we do that? Why? Uh, didn't it already destroy a card in the field? Yeah, so what the heck did we stop here? What do you mean can't respond? What? Is doing nothing. Cross out, designate, negate that maxi as we summon a D Lotus from the deck. It's just BM. Yeah, we're BMing, I guess. All right, we know we're going to win this. Samsar D Lotus is going to summon from the deck our Spirit of Ubel. Come to us. Nightmare Pain, Nightmare Pain. Pop the Spirit of Ubel. Grab the Grave Squirmer. Summon a Ubel from the deck. Also, return from the graveyard back in the deck to summon our Phantom of Ubel. Pop our Ubel with the Grave Squirmer. Summon from the deck Terra Incarnate. Link this off into the Yama. Yama come forth from the deck, our Shavara. Skorma reborn from the graveyard, our spirit of Yubel or Yubel. Pop the Yubel, summon a Terra Incarnate back onto the field from the graveyard, we're summoning it. Further linking this up into the Unchained Soul of Anguish so we can link off the opponent's monster. We're gonna link off with that lovely and then scoop it up so the Imperm early was definitely just BM. We're just BMing Labyrinth as we saw our play to win the duel right then and there. All right. What the clock? Clock is not even activatable on the field, so you're thinking if there's a clock on the field, they definitely have a big welcome to return it back to the hand to then make it activatable. But they have an Ash Blossom for the big welcome, but you have a welcome which stops the Ash Blossom because we're gonna summon a Lovely, then Lovely will make it so Ash is not activatable against the big welcome. Thus, they should probably just use Ash against the regular welcome. And let's see what happens. And we also have an Ice Dragon Prison to steal a Ubel out of the graveyard to then banish another Ubel in the field. That could be quite good. We're gonna welcome Labyrinth, Ash, Negate. Gotcha, mates. And then we're gonna flip up the big welcome in response to the Ash Blossom. Chain the Max C. Sure. We should only be special summoning just once here. As we come forth and summon from the deck our Lady instead of a Lovely. We do have the Ice Dragon Prison to not only steal a Fiend out of the graveyard to then banish a Fiend in the field, but the Lady will also set a new trap from the deck, which will be activatable to turn it set, thanks to the Coup Clock. All right, Yama is here. Effect Veiler negates. Do we play Effect Veiler ourselves to then use our cross out Designate on? Apparently not. Or we're holding the cross out Designate for something better. We're gonna use this right here, right now. Now, what's interesting about the effect of the Spirit Gates is it doesn't target. So you have to assume what you think they want to reborn, then they could reborn something else. We're gonna use the Ice Dragon Prison. The correct assumption is that they are going to attempt to summon the Spirit of Ubel. And we're gonna chain Our Lady to that. Now, I could argue that a big mistake happened here. We probably very likely should have chained cross out designate to the ice dragon prison calling whatever the heck you want just to chain link block the lady because the newly set trap which is literally any trap from the deck is activatable due to the Ku clock. So only because of the Ku clock we definitely should have chain link blocked this. From the deck we're now getting for free a Daruma destructive cannon we could flip the whole field face down. Stealing the Ubel, banishing the Yama. Yama really wants to be in the graveyard, so that is quite devastating. And we're actually just ending our turn. Not only disrupting the summon of the Spirit of Ubel, but by banishing it, they now cannot summon from their extra deck a Phantom of Ubel. That is crazy. We didn't even need the Daruma Cannon. Lady, while there's a set card, she's indestructible by card effects and also cannot be targeted. So if we were to Gamma her, she will be negated but not destroyed. Activate the Max C in the draw phase just to get Gamma. We knew that there was Gamma from game one. So yeah, this is quite unfortunate. We maybe should have tried to play around it. We're going to then further link this up and do a Nightmare Phoenix forcing out the activation of the Daruma Cannon. This is another opportunity to chain link block that lady. Chain the cross out designate just to stop the lady. We're not doing it. We ain't doing it. We're holding that cross out designate. And you know what? The cross out being held onto, it may pay off. I'll be waiting for it, but if it doesn't, then we definitely should have been stopping this. 
And you may be thinking, like, oh, there's only one cross now. We can't just keep stopping it. Well, if we stopped it the first time, there would have never been a Daruma to even flip up to then chain to it again. So just endlessly chaining off of newly set traps in the deck. If you just stop the first one, it stops the rest. We have our own Daruma flipping us face down. And if at least one card is flipped face down, we then have to send every other card to the graveyard. So goodbye to the Phoenix there. Spirit Gates is activatable more than once per turn if you have multiple copies. There you go. That's the cross out designate reborning our Chaos Summoning Beast instead. Almirage tells me that we want to make a Little Knight. So Almirage it up into SP. Little Knight is here. Very well done. On someone, banish a card from the field or graveyard, taking out that Welcome Labyrinth. Not big enough to swing into the Lady. And Lady can very simply flip up, activate nothing, attack into Little Knight, and then we're done. Yep. Just as suspected here, we have no D Lotus, no Spirit of Ebel in the graveyard to reborn with this double Spirit of the opening gates. We're going to discard the Gamma Reborn from the graveyard, then make a Muckraker because we don't play a second copy of Yama likely. And then ending the turn, that's not very good as the Lady will be chaining to our impermanence to set any trap we want from the deck. Our newly set trap being our big Welcome Labyrinth. Lovely is not banished, so we have access to her, whether she is in the hand, deck, or graveyard. Pot of P reducing her damage by half. At 3,600 life, we maybe should have just pushed for game. Uh, if we could have had game, right? We uh, do, there is like a Muckraker plus uh, a Lovely. That's That would be game, right? Summon Lovely, pop. Uh, okay, just like that, let's hop into game three. We have Dark Beckoning Beast. We're not going to Veiler that. And had we Veiler that, what would happen is we could have, you know, besides the cross out designate, let's pretend we didn't have that. We could triple tactics talent, draw two more cards, or look at their hand. We could have Grave Scormer special summon to then further link up into a Yama, make plays off of that. But we would lose access to the Spirit Gates, giving us the ability to discard a Spirit of Ubel to then reborn it. So there are some circumstances where using Veiler on the Dark Beckoning could be a pretty good player, even in permanence. Now, some people may be thinking Grave Scormer could dodge the Imperma Veiler. No, only on a Ubel monster. It would not work on Dark Beckoning. It can't dodge it. Additionally, summon our Chaos Summoning Beast. We are now going to whip out that Maxi as we then cross out, designate, negate that Maxi. I do not think so. A true dodge of Impermanence or Veiler would be a Shavara. We make Yama. We would activate the search for Shavara. If we had another Shavara, we could then chain dodge the effect Veiler here. Negate, as we should. And then we have our Triple Tactics Talent. We still have the Spirit Gates to discard Ubel to then reborn Ubel, searching for a Nightmare Pain. Or we're going to save that other Veiler for the Spirit of Ubel. We're going to chain the Chandelier, discarding our Daruma Cannon from our hand. As they are going to look at our hand, returning that effect Veiler back into the deck because we got plays. We don't have to draw cards here. This is it. Return that Veiler back, and now let's start popping off. Discard Spirit of Ubel, Reborn, Trigger, set up the Nightmare Pain. And Boda hasn't even had a turn yet. It has nothing in the hand. And we have a set Welcome Labyrinth only, which is not activatable at the moment. This is not looking good for Boda. Ubel, Summon Terror Incarnate, Nightmare... Oh, now we have nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nightmare Phoenix wiping out that back row. Welcome, Labyrinth. Oh, my gosh. Should we have just held on to the Chandelier? Were we, were we really afraid of them returning the Chandelier back? They probably would have returned the Effect Veiler back so that the Spirit of Ubel would have went through. All right, good job to Pilot, knocking out everyone from the Spicy Duel Room. Let's keep on going. 